This is 3.11 spectroscopy and the electromagnetic spectrum. So our outcome is I can explain the relationship between a region of the electromagnetic spectrum and the types of molecular or electronic transitions that occur in matter. In other words, when I shoot different energy at matter, uh, how does that affect uh, the molecular and electronic transitions in that matter? So how does that change the behavior of that matter? So you're going to download the presentation and uh, go through it, take down notes, and then organize your understanding into Cornell style notes. Uh, so you should have one question per topic, but if you want to break it up into two or more questions, that's fine too. And then you'll submit your notes to the assignment in Google Classroom. So taking a look at this presentation, Again, we're trying to explain the relationship between the region of the electromagnetic spectrum, in other words, the energy, and the types of transitions that occur. So starting with what is electromagnetic radiation? So this is a spectrum, a range of all different types of electromagnetic radiation. So we can think of electromagnetic radiation in terms of photons. So these are massless particles traveling in a wave-like pattern at the speed of light. So each photon contains a specific amount of energy. And the different types of radiation are defined by the amount of energy in those photons. So radio waves have photons with very low energies. Microwave photons will be a little bit more energy than radio waves. Infrared proto uh, photons are still more. Then we get into our visible light, which our eyes happen to be able to detect photons of those energies. And then we get into ultraviolet X-rays, and the most energetic of all is gamma rays. So electromagnetic radiation can be expressed in terms of energy, wavelength, and frequency. So based on the energy of a photon, it's going to be assigned to a different region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So x-rays, gamma rays, UV radiation, those are harmful to living things because those photons have very high energy. Uh, so that means that they can penetrate tissues and knock electrons off of DNA molecules. So this is also sometimes called ionizing radiation because it has enough energy to ionize um, uh, atoms to remove electrons. This causes damage to the DNA and that may cause that cell to replicate uncontrollably. So this leads to um, cancer and tumors. Uh, visible infrared microwaves and radio wa waves and lower energies, um, they don't pose any threat to humans. So every once in a while you get like that video where somebody waters a plant with microwaved water versus regular water, that's not real. So what is spectroscopy? So spectroscopy is how we study the interactions between matter and those photons of different types of electromagnetic radiation. So matter can absorb or emit radiation in different regions of the spectrum. We can study this radiation and use that to determine things like the structure of a molecule. So microwave radiation causes molecules to rotate. Infrared radiation causes atoms and molecules to vibrate. And ultraviolet and visible radiation causes electrons to move between energy levels. And you saw that whenever you did a flame test lab. So what can we learn from spectroscopy? We can do chemical analysis. So we can match spectra to known databases. Uh, we can also monitor chemical reactions as they occur. That's a thing that we'll do later on. We can also determine structural details of the molecule. So certain chemical groups are going to interact with radiation in different ways. So we can determine what chemical groups are present in a molecule. So it could be an alcohol group, a carbonyl group, whatever. And we can also use this to determine the atomic structure 
in molecules and crystals. We can also use spectroscopy to study electronic structure, so the structure of electrons. So electron transition between energy levels can help us determine the spacing between energy levels in an atom. So starting with microwave radiation, when a molecule absorbs microwave radiation, it starts to rotate, and it can rotate about each of its axes. So we can study the energy of that rotation. We can study its angular momentum. So from that, we can figure out the structure of the molecule. So angular momentum relates to how much an object is rotating and on the distribution of mass. And there's a moment of inertia that uh, describes that distribution, which is related to bond length. So we can actually figure out how long the bond lengths are between these atoms. Uh, it can only be used on gases because in solids and liquids, those molecules are not free to rotate because there's other molecules around them. So this is the very same radiation as the microwave that's in your house. So when the water molecules in your food absorb microwave radiation, they rotate, and that increases their kinetic energy, which makes them get warm. So if you're interested, there's a couple of, uh, there's a good reading there about microwave and food. So here's all the rotations that water undergoes, so along each of its axes, um, due to microwave radiation. Uh, when a molecule absorbs infrared radiation, the molecules start to vibrate, they start to stretch. Um, so by studying the energy of those vibrations, scientists can work out the structure of the molecule. So we could have asymmetric stretching or symmetric stretching or bending. Um, this is most often used to identify bonds within organic compounds. So we can actually identify the compound based on the features of the spectrum. Uh, this can also be used to probe the structure of a molecule when it's not well understood. So here's an example of an IR spectrum. And this shows several different peaks um, at different wave numbers and different transmittances. So someone, a, a analytical chemist, would study this and they would be able to say, ah, this particular feature indicates that I have an oxygen to hydrogen stretch, so I must have an alcohol group on this molecule. We could also see that there's uh, CH stretches here from this peak, so I know I have carbons attached to hydrogens. Um, and here we have some specific stretches that indicate a carbon attached to an oxygen. So these features can be attributed to the structure of the molecule. This indicates to us what types of groups are present in the molecule. So when a molecule is exposed to uh, ultraviolet or visible radiation, it's going to cause transitions to occur within the electrons between energy levels. So they will transition from a non-excited ground state to an excited state, producing an absorption spectra. So if I shine light of all wavelengths onto this atom, which is representing hydrogen, the electrons are going to absorb some of those wavelengths that correspond to what it needs to make that jump. Uh, it's going to re-emit that energy then, so our emission spectrum is going to show us uh, those wavelengths that were absorbed uh, being re-emitted by that electron. So here's a video about light and matter and some questions to answer. So a photon is a massless particle that has a wavelength and a frequency. Uh, light is made of photons, and matter, when it interacts with photons, can absorb them and increase in energy. So this is why, like, if you leave a glass of water on your windowsill, Photons of light from the sun are hitting the water and being absorbed by their molecules, making it heat up. So how is light like a violin note? So a violin note can be uh, continuous, wave-like, whereas a piano key 
you can only press one key at a time. It's particle-like. So how is wavelength, frequency, and energy related? So we saw in uh, previous classworks, we saw those equations E equals HF and uh, C equals lambda times frequency, wavelength times frequency. So the greater the frequency of a wave, of a photon, that means we have a small wavelength, and that means high energy. So small wavelength means high frequency, and that means high energy. Uh, so a spectrometer works by comparing the uh, light or radiation before and after interacting with the matter. And we can see differences there um, between uh, what we had before and after that interaction. We can figure out lots of things from that, how the energy is distributed. We can figure out um, energy levels, lots of stuff. Uh, what can we learn using IR spectroscopy? So we can learn things about uh, the structure, what uh, atoms are bound together, what groups are present. Using ultraviolet and visible light, we can learn about the electronic structure. A solution can absorb visible light if it contains a colored solute. Uh, so what is the relationship between concentration and absorbance? The higher the concentration of particles, the more the light, the more the photons of a particular wavelength that will be absorbed.